Good day, folks. It's DIY Guy123 here again, bringing you another do it yourself video. Listen, I don't know. This is the second time this Acura TL has been in my shop in two months. Same symptom. First time it was here, my friend said, Oh, just won't start. Don't know. Worked fine yesterday. Went out today, turned the key. No, no noise. Won't do anything. Month later, she says, hey, won't start again. Same symptom, turn the key, nothing. So I thought, whoa, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe the alternator I put in failed. I've seen that before where a new part can fail shortly after installation. I was pretty relieved when I got up there and checked the battery voltage and it was one and a half volts, but then boosted it with a good battery and the battery voltage went right up to 14 volts. So I'm like, there's nothing wrong with the alternator or at least it doesn't appear to be. So we put it on the charger all day and at the end of the day, when I came back to check on it, after 12 hours being on the charger, the charger is showing that it's, the car is still drawing two and a half amps. So I'm like, that is a lot after 12 hours being on the charger. So I tested the battery itself. Now it is an old battery. I don't know how old it is, but it's a 650 cold cranking amp uh, glass mat battery, I guess. And my King Bolin battery tester, this guy right here, shows that the battery's in good shape. I've got videos on how to test batteries with that inexpensive tester. Shows that the battery's in good shape. So it's not the alternator, it's probably not the battery. Maybe it's a parasitic drain. So <clears throat> first thing I did was I noticed when I took the battery terminal off, I heard a click and I'm gonna simulate that now. Oh, well, you don't hear it when, it when you take it off, but when you put it on, you'll hear it. Hear that? I'll put it back on. And so the arrangement I have here, it's hard, kind of hard to see, but this is a voltmeter monitoring battery voltage is at 12.4 right now. So maybe a little bit discharged, but not that much. This is measuring the draw on the battery, 2.6 amps. I have my, my ammeter on the 10 amp scale so it doesn't get damaged. So this rasp nest of wires is really just to make this in parallel with the battery. And this is, this is in series with the battery. Battery cable off and touched it back to the battery terminal again. I heard this abnormally loud click and I've traced it to the air conditioning compressor. Now I'm going to hopefully see things changing. It should not be doing that when you connect and disconnect the battery. I'm gonna hopefully see this parasitic draw go down 2.7 amps will definitely kill a battery overnight. So I'm gonna find the fuse, pull it, see if the parasitic draw goes away. And then if that does go away, it'll prove my theory that the air conditioning compressor is causing the draw. And then I will put the fuse back in and pull the relay out and see if that causes the draw to go away. And then I will swap the relay with another relay and see if the parasitic draw, draw stays away and that clicking stops. So that's my theory, let's see if it works. So this has been sitting for a couple of minutes now while I took the fuse panel off. It's not labeled very well, but there is a picture of a snowflake right there. And so if I look at where that is in the fuse panel, it's right here. And I'm going to pull that out. And what we're ideally looking for is less than 50 milliamps of parasitic drain steady state. So if you have that, your battery can last for a number of weeks before it won't start. But if you have more than 50, 60, if you're up above 70 milliamps, you're ba you've got a problem with your vehicle. There's something that's gonna cause a battery to discharge too quickly. So I've seen them anywhere as low as 10 milliamps and as much as 60 and be okay. And I'll pull this out with my handy dandy pliers. You do have to be careful with needle nose pliers because you could crack the casing, but I've, uh, I'm gonna be careful here. Let's pull this out. Hey, what do we got? 240 milliamps. Okay, it's one tenth of what we had. So let's let that settle for a minute. Maybe something will go to sleep. With the vehicle off though, with this relay installed, touching and removing the positive cable to the positive terminal battery should not make that compressor clutch go on and off. However, it was. When I removed this, that resolved the problem. It caused the parasitic draw to go from two and a half amps down to about 260 milliamps. And it stayed there for quite a period of time. And I was concerned there might be some other parasitic draw. So we're doing a parasitic draw test right now. And to do that,
you have to have a fully charged battery. I, in fact, have a trickle charger on the battery right now. It's at 12.7 volts. I hope you can see that on the camera. And then I have my ammeter in series with the positive lead that goes to the battery. It's not connected at the moment. That's why it shows zero amps. And I've got my timer. So I'm going to hook up the battery right now and we'll see this current rise to 1.3 amps and it'll fluctuate around for the first few seconds. It's probably gonna drop down to like 580 milliamps. Yes, yeah, 420, 560. So it's jumping around and then it quickly gets to 0.23 amps, which is 230 milliamps. Now, so we're gonna let this run and we'll see how long it takes for that, if even, that 230 milliamps drops to something below 50. It's okay that it's up above 50 for two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, even maybe even half an hour, for example. Well, the, the car is running tests and monitoring things and security systems, but at some point in the next half hour, 45 minutes at least, and probably much sooner, I would expect that 230 milliamps to drop down to less than 50. Okay, so at three minutes and 15 seconds, we see that the current draw went below the 260, it was milliamps, it's now 10 milliamps, plus minus this ammeter doesn't have the third digit in this setting. So, you know, it's around 10 milliamps. All right, good luck with your do-it-yourself projects. If you like my videos, please subscribe.